Uh, welcome to what is this episode eight of the project for Duronki. So we're gonna work through deployments. So in there we'll have uh, a section dedicated to deployment config and a section dedicated to hosting. Easy peasy. Okay, I think we're gonna grab some of this stuff because the deployment config here it has. We're gonna have to go through each one of these things and take a look at how it looks in the nanobox docs and then make sure that we have the appropriate sort of inputs. Okay, so extra steps run after your app's runtime is built, but before the runtime is packaged for use. Okay, just strings. Before live hooks run on a new container or server before it starts accepting live requests. Okay, so this is gonna be, I think, a group of hooks. Before live, before live all, after live and after live all. So they have to take the name of the component first and then multiple strings after that. So if we have to look at like the stuff we've already designed, it probably looks something like this, but not exactly. So let's get rid of this because nothing in here is single. So extra steps is the first one. We're just gonna use the examples that they have because I'm sure they figured this out. And then in the same sort of uh, style you have transform. I'm gonna copy paste this because this is a lot of text. And then we're gonna find out these aren't wide enough. You know, I I think we might end up getting rid of that ad if for not if for no other reason than like I kind of need the horizontal space. Forget about the money. <laughs> Just need the horizontal space. Okay, so then we have hooks. So we've got four hooks, potentially multiple hooks per component, uh, but four potential hook types. Okay, let me draw this just so we can, before we start designing it. So we would have like the name, and then this would block out like down to there or something. And then you're gonna have before live, before live all, after live, after live all. These all have to be titles. And then underneath that, you would have whatever the hooks are. So if you have like 20 components, is this gonna become stupid? It might. So then you're kind of stuck doing like one, two, three, four, which I guess could work because you could call one of them the befores and one of the afters. Yeah, that's probably okay. And then we'll draw some, uh, some containment into this. I think we'll just leave that white and drop the opacity. The reason I'm doing this, and I'll figure this out a little bit better, is because I think it's gonna have to, you're gonna have to sort of explain to the person that this is connected. And what better way to explain than a big stupid line that shows these things connected. Okay, now let's give this a little section break. This is not a, this is, we've gone down a wrong, the wrong path. <laughs> this has just gone the wrong way. <laughs> what are we even doing with it? Uh, okay, let's try some more lines maybe. You know, I think that the one thing that is probably the closest is just putting a thing behind it. And then can we get rid of that? And then can we move this over? Yeah, there's something to resolve here. Who cares? We got the UI elements in place. So we'll do one more just to see how this would look. Make that a little bit tinier. Push it over one pixel. And we'll make uh, some little Kirby's. Kirby boys. What? How did that? What What just happened there? Change the left corner. Okay. Nope. It's like changing. Where is it changing that from? Really, Illustrator? Really? What do you, what do you figure? Oh, why is it Why is it 180 degree rotated? We just made this, right? Like, <laughs> we didn't... Like, what? Illustrator will never cease to amaze me with, like, the odd stuff. Okay, so now we're going to show another case just for this worker that only has one after live and one before live. Okay, so we're gonna do something here. I gotta look the docs up. Um, there's two components to hosting. I think there's always a provider and always like a place. So I almost think we need to capture the hosting provider first. 
Okay, so the hosting providers are only going to be from providers you already have added. We'll probably make some simple modal to add those. Uh, we're not going to design that because we have a modal style already. But what would we do here? I, I almost feel like what we do is we just tell them the hosting provider, but we w let's just pretend it's unset. And if it's unset, they have to input it. You have two accounts at DigitalOcean. Okay. So you think it would make sense to allow for multiple accounts? We'd have to identify them. So you would say, select the provider and then select the account and then the region. Okay. And I guess what we could do here is in the drop down, we'll just have a little thing that says add new provider. They tap that modal pops up and goes the new provider. That's easy. So that would be it's unset. And then let's make the same thing, but now it's been set. We gotta move this down more. And the reason we're repeating is because we're showing two different states. So then here, hosting provider has been set. And now we get to stick the danger zone back up and tell them, what are you doing? <laughs> you, you want to do what now? So they hold down change hosting. This turns back into this form and maybe a little cancel button next to it. Hook, hold on, what is hook timeout? So hook timeout config lets you set a timeout for your deploy hooks. Hook timeouts are specified in seconds. So it's just like a thing you would set up here. Maybe like right before you start listing all these guys down. I'm also curious if we maybe want to do something with the hosting provider piece here. So then we get a section called hosting. Cool. One section done. Well, we have our first kind of hard thing to design. So we've got to have a way for them to see all of the available boxes on AWS. Is that for real? Oh, that's a lot of stuff to show. And I don't know, like, again, I don't know if Nanobox did this the right way. So this is like how they pulled it off. Is they, it looks like what they did here is they, they got the specifications that they thought were important. The disk, the RAM, the CPU. And then they created this little bar chart. I don't know if it's really easy to see that, but can I zoom you zoom? Keep zooming. Oh, we are all the way zoomed down. We are like grandpa's trying to figure out how to use a computer zoomed down. So they have this like these little bars that I are definitely indicating like relative to the things near it. What kind of CPU, RAM, whatever. The problem is this becomes completely impossible to work with. Like you see, like it's it's pretty, it works as a selection, no problem. But as a method to sort information, it gives you like the gist. So should this be this big list of stuff to select from? Or should it just be like, what's more important to you? CPU, RAM, disk? That might not be a stupid way to do it. What's more important to you? CPU, RAM, disk. I'm liking where this is going in my head. So this becomes a wizard, kind of. Becomes a thing where, what, what, how would we do this? Let's do some sketching. Okay, so you have sort of this like interface and it's telling you to like choose your box. You have a selector that says CPU, RAM, disk and bandwidth, I guess. And then underneath that, once you select like this, then you get a slider that starts off with like two core to whatever, 64 core. And I wonder too, if you just have one that says general, and then that's, if you select that, would show you more. So when you select CPU, you only care about the CPU, we'll say, and you just sort of like drag this guy over and it starts filtering down a list. And when you say, I want general, like then you would give them all the options. Cause this will bring, this will allow us to bring in just like general boxes. So generals are catch all. Okay. So once you're through this sort of wizardy thing, then you would get your list and then it's just going to have all these options and include all these things. 
And again, if you've told us something like to kind of base an analysis off of, we can show it. This is a big interface though, and we're gonna need to contain it. So we're gonna need to make this work in something like this size. Cause I, I don't have any problem just like popping modal for every, popping modal, we're popping modal. We're gonna probably have to pop a modal for everything though. Okay, so now we kinda got this figured out here. I think it's, yeah, it's somewhere around here. Maybe what we'll do is in this same way, say default box. Here is where we'd sort of show the stats from the box, right? So we'd say like every instance that you're bringing up is gonna have these stats. And I think just the same thing here. Mm. So what we're gonna do is we're going to make this a toggle state and we're gonna put a little button over here. This says change. So when you click this button, another button will show up here. It'll, or rather it will reveal the danger zone. I'm moving this. I don't think we're actually going to design this. I think we're going to make that just a sketch because that's going to be a heck of a lot easier to do inside of HTML and CSS. So I think we just knocked out the global setup. So now we're going to get into the Mac daddy. So do we need a design difference between staging single instance and production? Probably not. Let's just do the production one. So let's walk through this a little bit. We have a production tab here, which represents the production state. So you have, you have this group of things that you're calling a production server. I think in terms of UI, this rail, we probably should design this in first. Rail could maybe be for things you only really do once, things you don't do that often. Okay, so we have components that are gonna be these guys and we'll need to break out cpu disk ram swap disk remaining total bandwidth okay so let's start working through some of these stats in a notepad file so okay that's i think that's the stats that we need to display and <laughs> that's gonna be hard like there's no easy bit about that so each component's gonna have to have this stuff and then each component's also gonna have to have controls. So there's gonna be a number of uh, instances that this represents, and then the uh, ability to change. So we're gonna just gonna break out, let's start with separate. And what this will do, we'll just say this will move component into its own instance, which will trigger number of instances plus instance type. Then we'll have scale, which would, would only be available on an instance level. And it's gonna let you set the number of instances and separate again. So we'll say this will be only be available on a multi-component level, meaning there's like, it's a child. So then we need to do things that aren't really controls. They're more like links. Open a terminal, reboot. Okay. So you can delete a child, you can reboot a child. You can separate it, turn into it. It's gonna do all those same things. So a parent could be moved. And then there's like host. And then there's like a difference between single component parents and then multi-component parents. So we're gonna design for the one we know. Okay though, I think that's enough to start actually designing. Okay, so we're gonna start with the rail because that's going to be the, the odd one out. And now you think the rail, it, we might want all that horizontal space. So it might make a lot of sense to, instead of do a rail, make it like a header. Start with launch production. I thought what might make sense here or what could be kind of cool is if we have a button that you have to drag. And we'll work this out. I'm just getting the raw shapes in right now. I do want to create some separation between this and the component list. I think what we'll do is we'll just set this on a different background color. So we have a couple extra controls we need to stick in there too. I was just thinking of a way to like get the header and the uh, launcher production section combined. We've got these items right here. So I'm just going to copy and paste them into the interface. So we need little buttons for those guys that'll send you off to another page. I don't think we've really established what that looks like anywhere. 
but part of me wants this to be like icony, sort of like this. I'm fine with that. Phoning it in. Okay, so now we have to come up with a component display. So we have all of these components that we need to figure out how to lay into the interface. This screen, we have this sort of like slick way to display it. This is gonna get real ugly real quick. <laughs> it's like, it looks nice right now, kind of. We have a thing over here where we can flip these on and off. That is, a th is that a thing that we can do? We do not have turn off. And to be truthful, I think we're just gonna get rid of that whole icon set. Let's go a little bit bigger with these guys. Need some space to work with, especially when we start laying the graphs in. We have to lay four graphs into this puppy. Over here, we were able to like sort of just say, okay, use the max out of any one of these things. But in this world, we're gonna have to show those graphs. So realistically, those graphs could be really big. Can we somehow make this so everything is available right on this card? I think so. How detailed of a graph do you need? Probably not that detailed. And we're just gonna have to live with these all being equal space because we have five of these that do really make sense to have a lot of fidelity. Then we have one that doesn't just doesn't make sense so if we have a CPU uh, it goes left or right and we'll just make some spiky little line chart here this this might look like garbage now that I'm doing it this is this like really might not come out all that good oh, I gotta go I know I'm a slow designer but I'm just meticulous with my crap and then we get results like this which aren't great so they, that's not always a payoff okay guys well i'm gonna get out of here so everybody have a good night uh and i'll see you tomorrow